notified ward council, but also uh, it should go to the three parties both persons as well, which is a lot more beneficial to the well after certain members don't need anything. Thanks, Dave. Last but by no means least, I do remember, I'm going to write your name down, you know, and then... <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. I've got sidetracked, I've got sidetracked. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We move on to item 7. Okay, Chair, on this, can I just have, I'm, I do apologise, um, this is in my ward, and I did a review before, I forgot to mention it. It's a uh, name the road, it mentioned the name the road. Can I just move the committee back and um, my uh, to item six? I didn't make the recommendation. So I, 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 I started to to read it out when I was interrupted. <laughs> in that case, I would like to second you. <laughs> but what I would like to say, if I'm not interrupted, <laughs> no one endorsed the proposed changes to the Council's constitu constitution outlined in this report. Recommend to full Council for approval. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Item number seven. Agreed. Thanks, John. Agreed? Agreed. 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 Yeah. Agreed. Thank you. Chair, sorry, you're to be just have a member of the side of the committee. Yeah, just I might have made you before we spoke that up. Um, you haven't opened it up yet, John. Oh, okay. Well, before you open it up, I said. Um, it's got a leg down sign. It's a sister dance. Yeah. Sorry, Chair.
with the training of 1,048 young children that attended the Emergency Services Training Centre, which was co-funded with the um, National Health. And hopefully some of the figures that's gone on here may have reduced. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed because a lot of the youngsters that we, I spoke to afterwards, after the training, and it was an all-day training, it wasn't a five-minute job, um, that, uh, that they all realised what they were doing was wrong. I, I, I played around on buses, played around on trains, um, kept playing in traffic, um, and they all realised the consequences from that. So just hopefully, um, we had our own um, colleagues, uh, I don't know if it's from your centre, Mark, um, the training centre, the bike, or the bike, the bike safe, that's the word, bike safe, they were there, and they've done an excellent job. It was a three day, for the amount of the amounts that we have there, so hopefully we look at the figures later on this year, and we see if we can pattern, we've got a good comparison from last year, to see that maybe, hopefully, And we're doing another one. Uh, the next one is in July next year, 2016. And I'll be on that as well. Thanks, John. What I was going to say is I won't tell you what I used to do when I was a child. But there was a lot less traffic on the road than those days. Horses, yeah, there was a few rounds. Steve, you'd like to say something? Also, I was just on what John said there. Is that, um, talk through you, Jim. Is, is that, was that borough wide or was that just for your own? No, borough wide. We had one from the whole world. Um, and the age range from the specific was 10 years up to 15. We found that the 15 year olds were not really engaged as much. So what we've now got to do is bring it down slowly, it's like bring it down to about 13, 14 year olds for next year um, and really concentrate on that. We have, we have out of the 1,048, there was 31 or 32 came from Liverpool uh, because we had a, 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 a few you know, people that said, oh, we're not going to have money. Because they had to supply all the transport, but we couldn't. I mean, this was all done from free of charge. We did supply with water, ice cream, and barbecue to keep them going the other day. I mean, uh, each one, the ones that were actually surprised me when I was walking around in late in the afternoon, I saw quite a few walking around with uh, slings on. What's going on? I thought some of them had accidents because we only had one accident. I was in 1048. Um, and they said, oh, we're group class of trains, so we'll take off now. So, no, we're going to go all the way But it, honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. It's yeah. a peace street. That's it, yeah. I've been involved with that now from day one. Um, and it did it, it, from what we put on. And we thought it might not work, and it did work. Thanks, John. Thank you, Dave. Dave. Thank you, Chair. It's uh, in relation to. Uh, we have to deliver a master plan to the Bay Town Centre. Does that include the Hamilton Square project? Um, through you, Chair, that um, specifically relates to the proposals that we're looking at with Neptune developments at the moment in the Ramby Town Centre. Uh, but we are, are doing a wider piece of work uh, that looks at Woodside, Hamilton Square, Argyle Street, back into the Town Centre and up to Grange Road, Western and Oxford Road. So it's fairly comprehensive of the town centre. Uh, in addition to that, members may be aware that there was a successful vote for the Business Improvement District that was announced uh, earlier on today. Um, and that will bring uh, further focus to the town centre. And with the increased levy, that will bring an extra two million pounds of, of investment from businesses into the Birkenhead town centre area. So I think that's positive, in addition to the work that we're seeking to do as well. Uh, can I come back on that, Chair? The reason I ask the question is because it's not that long since it was uh, actually blocked off uh, in the sense. And the authority spent an awful lot of time and energy doing that during the Hamilton Quarter process with the development of the Hamilton Quarter. 
Now you're looking to reverse it, surely that is a classic waste of money. Um, I don't believe that that is a waste of money. Um, in the Hamilton Quarter uh, days, which was a number of years ago now, there was uh, initiatives that members may recall uh, to try and revitalise and regenerate that area. Uh, some of those were successful, uh, but others uh, were not successful. And what we've seen over the past few years is quite a number of businesses moving out of the Hamilton Square area. A number of the cafe and other businesses on the lower ground floor have also closed. Uh, and in adjacent streets and areas like Market Street, uh, there's been an increasing uh, vacancy of properties. Um, now, we are currently looking at what we can do um, in and around Hamilton Square to actually see if we can enliven that area. One of the approaches, obviously, the, the transport scheme and opening up some of those areas that members may be seeing are in a consultation process uh, around that at the moment. Uh, but we are also doing a lot of uh, work uh, with businesses in the area and property owners and others to talk about ways in which we can try and revitalise that area because it's quite a key place when you think of what could be uh, developed down the woodside and on the waterfront, coming back up through Hamilton Square Station, into the square itself and then back into the town centre. So it's a really strong link uh, for us and, and one that we need to just um, have a look at again really and uh, review and, and again we'll be working now with the new big company that's been put in place to do that. So I don't believe it's a waste um, of money. I believe times have moved on, economic circumstances have changed, and what we're trying to do from council officers' perspective is, um, is just understand those challenges and see what uh, further things we can do uh, in order to bring revitalisation to that critical area of Birkenhead. Uh, just drag it on a little bit of May, because, and I will do, because it, to me it's one of those things, is the whole idea of the Hamilton Quarter was designed to revive and revitalise the Hamilton Square sector and the whole quarter. Obviously, you got the whole project wrong the first time round. You either have, or things have changed dramatically. The most dramatic change was moving the bus depot from Woodside to Conway Street. That killed off all the traffic and the transport to the ferries. It's affected the ferries greatly and the footfall through Hamilton Square and that particular section and area. That was one of the main catalysts that's done that. I mean, has anybody ever done a piece of work to look at why the project that you did in the first place failed so dramatically? And then come back and say, what we need to do to address it is do this and this. You know, all I see is you're just re reviewing what you've already done. You've made a mistake and you're going back to make another one. The thing is, as an authority, we are strapped for cash. And if we're going to spend money on major projects, we need to make sure that we spend it wisely and in the right way. Just a quick response. Uh, yes, we would agree that we need to invest um, whatever money we have access to wisely. Uh, I think in terms of the Hamilton Quarter, it's not true to say that the, um, the project itself failed. There were certain elements of it that were very successful. Uh, but there are other elements over the course of years that have not been successful and one of those was you know, the opportunity to try and develop um, cultural arts and businesses in that area uh, which started off reasonably promising but then um, didn't uh, materialise and, and there's others, I won't go into all of the, the detail but what we are trying to do at the moment is look very carefully at not just Birkenhead Town Centre but wider Birkenhead, if I can call it that and to try and address the challenges uh, that that area has and realise the opportunities. So we're trying to make you know, careful and considered investments uh, to address the, the issues that that area is, um, is facing. Clearly with the economic circumstances, things do change over time and we, we don't get everything right and it, it's impossible to do so. But I think what we're trying to do here is look at how we can revitalise Hamilton Square, link it into Hamilton Square Station, then down to one side, but how we can link Hamilton Square back into Birkenhead Town Centre and, and the plans that we're looking actually in the town centre and then linking into the tunnels and into Hind Street and down to the A41 in support of the Camelair investments and uh, other <coughs> investments that we're doing down there at the moment. Um, it is it's part of a, a concerted plan to try and address some significant challenges in that area, if that helps it.
people and we need to be shout, picking them up, shouting at how good uh, these people are to get into a space like the ferry terminal. And do, if anyone hasn't been down there for a cup of tea and a, a scone, you should because you'll be absolutely a, a gog at how fantastic it is. And you know, I just like to see little those little beacons of light as things we can start to really get behind and, and, and build on. And I think we're at a place where we can start to do that. I, I'm sorry, so I don't want to carry on too long. So I, I agree with completely what you said because the year I was the mayor, we had at least three events in there, and it was a fantastic venue to to do the different things that we did. Do. I, I've got no objection. What we need to do is lift it more and more. And my view is that this is now looking the years I've been on the council. This is the third attempt we've had at trying to revitalise the centre of Erkenham. But well, we had the very first one, which was the development of the. Uh, the markets and the Grange Road itself. The second one again was the different parks, splitting it up into different parks through, and I'm very happy to support it, and we're back again. Surely we must have learned a lesson somewhere along the lines of authority, and make sure we work in the right direction. I understand the need to, and we should be promoting everything that we can for the entrepreneurs to move forward, because they're the ones who are going to get us out of the mess. There's no argument with that, we all agree with that. But it's what we're doing as a council really bugs me. And I'm sitting here 35 years after I first came on the council and I'm still still talking about the same section of land. Is it a vanity project or what? That's what I would have Who was the one that first instigated this to go back and change it again? Without probably getting into too much of a debate about this, um, the scheme that we're currently looking at to open up uh, Hamilton Square is, is a slightly wider scheme than just the square itself, as you know, um, or you may know. So it looks to link Hamilton Square Station, uh, which is the rail and the bus, um, with improved bus routes through, um, to open up the link to the tunnel to make access in and out of the Liverpool from the Hamilton Square area and into that area easier and it's part of a wider uh, proposal uh, to actually try and integrate the, the town centre. Um, I mean I don't believe it's a vanity project. Um, what we are trying to do is open up access so that <coughs> the um, businesses in the square because a number of them do comment to us that it's a very quiet area and have not much uh, passing trade and, and people are not coming into there. If you go into that area around 4.30, 5 o'clock at night, um, it's a dead area and it remains that way uh, until the following morning. And we've got to try and find some way of improving it. We've spoken to local residents who live in the area and adjacent to the area, um, and you know we're trying to respond to some of those discussions <coughs> and trying to support those businesses in that way. Not everybody agrees with the scheme. That there are different uh, views and perspectives on it, but we do believe as part of the overall approach to the town centre that it will actually bring benefits by, by opening up the square. Now we haven't decided on the final scheme yet, but it's still in consultation with <coughs> options uh, that, that we're exploring. Um, but, but that's the reasoning behind 